Hail to the king, baby. Dead or alive, you are coming with me. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Hope you're all well. So, we've had a very, very uh, interesting uh, set of videos produced. Um giving quite a detailed overlook of the Boeing company, its history, and uh, some of its uh, methodology and um, concepts for for tunneling. And um, I wanted to talk about Joel's tour of the Boeing company. Um, I think it, I think it's a really interesting topic. So, um, as you know, Joel did a two-part series, which I will link below. Um, a lot of the video covers things that I've covered in the previous 192 videos. Uh, granted, if you watch this channel uh, quite often, uh, probably Joe Joe's videos would already be telling you things that you already know. However, there were a good few things in there that were um, new to me or phrased in a different way that, that maybe has led to me um, coming to a different understanding about certain topics. But um, there were some definite nuggets of information in there that are worth talking about. And um, I think that the Boeing company is struggling a little bit at the moment and um, kind of explaining why that's happening is key to helping other people understand uh, the process of getting from 20 metres per day uh, with the current uh, TBMs they use in Las Vegas to getting to well over 200 meters per day. So one of the key kind of points that, that was mentioned over and over again is iterative design. Um, it is a hard process and hence why we're seeing all the slow progress. Um, I, I've been talking about this in various uh, videos. Um, I, I've, I've probably not used the term iterative design. Uh, I, I think I use the term continuous improvement but it's basically the same thing. Um, it, they were a startup company and they're having to start from scratch, they're having to build, build you know, several major components within a TBM themselves and having those uh, work hand in hand with all these other things that they're building. And in terms of re reliability and performance, that's proved quite uh, problematic. But I think we are turning a corner and the evidence is, is the um, in Texas at the Gigafactory. So um, one of the, the kind of the biggest pieces of information that maybe a lot of people missed is that Proofwalk 4 is coming fairly soon. Proofwalk 3 is, is more like a, a concept uh, TBM where they're putting some new um, systems and theories in, in place. And as you can see, it, it's just not got the reliability. So large parts of that machine are going to be... Um, uh, redesigned and that will ultimately lead us to proof of four but also we have proof of five which is on the drawing board once we go through the the testing and, and kind of um, measuring of proof of four that will then lead to proof of five maybe in the second half of 2025 maybe earlier than that who knows but uh, it, it's good to see that these machines are coming fairly often um, really quite a sad thing that I, a little bit disappointed, but hey, you know, um, maybe they've got a better way of doing it. I have a theory about that, which I'll talk about, is that this hexagonal segment concept has been abandoned. As you know, that has been one of the things that I've been beating the drum to. Um, but, um, you know, for, for certain reasons, they, they don't believe that is the way to go. Um, but hey, um, another kind of... Um, concept that they talk about is is Z pit or, or zero people within the tunnel during operation and continuous mining which we've talked about on this channel maybe in over 40 videos um, but yeah a lot of stuff to talk about so first of all iterative design so 
the the process of building a TBM that that's going to outperform all its co- competitors, whether that's Heron Connect or Robbins or the uh, the Chinese uh, companies, it, it is is a tough one. And the reason it's tough is that you go through a constant process of failure, and sometimes you're taking backward steps and you're learning from mistakes, and you're doing this all in very quick, rapid succession. And um, clearly. Uh, proof rock three is, is almost like a step back from proof rock two um, just because of the reliability issues and a lot of systems or the components that they have in that machine are not marrying up with other things um, because the main components in a TBM like the thrust cylinders and the erector and the screw conveyor uh, and then you've got uh, uh, the trucks that bring in the segments and, and all these different components, the, the conveyor belts um, and the stack, conveyor belt stack, all these things need to work hand in hand with one another. And at the moment, um, we're having issues with that. Um, now, they might work fairly well for a short period of time, but um, they, they they need further work. And... Um, that's what's happening with this particular machine, Proof Rock 3, and that it will go into the garbage bin of history as possibly one of the worst TBMs that the Boeing company has ever made. Um, but it was an important step along the road to getting to Proof Rock 8, Proof Rock 9, potentially even Proof Rock 10, when they're doing 200 meters per day. Because you've got to learn from your mistakes, you, you, you've got to gain that understanding. Because, because you're essentially learning things that have never been... Um, understood before and uh, the, the, the Boeing company has to go through this this phase where they ideate prototype build analyze and at any one point in the in the stage you can come back again and, and, and start the process from the beginning so it's good to see that going on it's good to see that that's been talked about um, 2024 is going to be a bit of a write-off in my opinion because this is still going through this 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 kind of phase of perfecting the machine um, in my personal opinion uh, even proof rock 5 probably won't be doing 80 meters per day or it might be slightly above that but um, from proof rock 5 we should see massive massive improvements so disappointingly hexagonal segments have been uh, rubbished and I suspect the reason for that is that um, actually making a system like this watertight is quite difficult and they don't go around corners too well so um, I certainly think there are processes that you could introduce that would make the system a bit more watertight um, it would involve a lot more grouting, but you'd be going in behind the machine and, and that wouldn't impede the overall progress, but mainly going round corners. Now, the solution that I offered to that was using what was called a bridging piece, whereby you go to your trapezoidal segments when you go around corners. And then when you get to a straight section, um, you switch back to hexagonal and uh, you might need, you know, seven or eight of these bridging pieces on uh, each length of tunnel that you're building with a particular TBM. Um, and I could see a path forward to 200 meters with that particular um, option. But um, clearly, the Boeing company has now said that they, they don't want to continue um, with with kind of R&D into hexagonal and they're going to focus on something else. And the key question uh, that was not answered in Joe's video is what in the goddamn hell they're going to do uh, to achieve continuous mining and there's only really one other option on the table um, when you're thrusting the machine forward you need a complete um, ring beam like we can see in the middle of the screen here at LVCC West Station now to build that that ring beam can take well over three or four minutes well over that possibly closer to ten minutes and um, that process of building it results in the machine stopping. So that's not efficient. Um, so if you're not going to change the segment design, 
then you need something else that you can thrust the machine forward using. Um, I think there's only one option on the table. I've had a good think about this, but this option is not integrating to current machines. So from now on, we're gonna be looking at current iterations of Proofrock. Does it have gripper shoes? Is it a gripper TBM such as this? Now, I've always thought to myself, this is quite an interesting way of doing it. However, it has a major limitation that is not uh, inflicted on the hexagonal segments. And the problem with a machine like this is that if you go into an area where you have a very soft um, strata or quite loose rock, then when you're thrusting the machine forward using the gripper shoe, the, the, this particular thing in red and blue here in the middle of the screen, um, you could penetrate into the, the, the kind of perimeter of your tunnel that you've just bored and it could sink in, uh, you know, 10, 12, 14 inches uh, and potentially that is very, very bad um, for the kind of integrity of that tunnel. So it only really works in areas where you have medium to high uh, strength uh, rock. So the question is, are they gonna develop two solutions or are they just gonna focus on areas with, with reasonably good strata? Now, potentially you could go through an area that has soft strata and just use the, um, the old method for that particular area and maybe you lose progress for three, 400 meters and then go back to your gripper shoes. Um, but yeah, it has, has limitations. Um, if you were in kind of a, a stiff clay kind of environment, you, you know, you couldn't make this work. It would be an impossibility. However, if you've got uh, like a quartz or, or some kind of hard rock uh, or, or like the schist in, 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 in uh, Las Vegas, then it would actually work. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. So Proof Rock 5 is coming. The question is, will Proof Rock 5 have grip issues? Um, how will they make all these components marry up together? So I, I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do a complete... Um, redesign again uh, of all the components whether that's the thrust cylinders uh, the main beam all, all the internals uh, that drive the machine forward uh, everything's going to get a redesign whether that's minor or major who knows but uh, I, I'm thinking that Proof Rock 5 will look totally alien to Proof Rock 2 and 3 in my opinion but um, this machine should be capable of over 80 meters per day, but the aim is 200 meters, in my opinion. That is a limiting factor. You're not going to get more than 200 meters. I've explained that in various other videos. I don't really care what it says on the Boeing Company website. Um, it goes against the laws of physics because you're um, you're you're overstressing the materials, and material science is key. And I don't personally think that you could make it do 200 meters per day consistently. Now, you might be able to make it do 200 meters in a day, but then the following day, you might only do 130 meters. So it, it, it's, it's a mixed bag. Um, some other components that were talked about quite a lot is, is uh, Z pit or zero people within the, the actual um, the tunnel that's being constructed. As you can see, on the left hand side, you, we've got uh, this gentleman here um, assen assembling this uh, uh, this tunnel uh, the lining or concrete segment. Until that concrete segment is installed and the key piece as well, um, in fact, it might only be one segment. So he's putting in the last segment here. Once he's installed that, then the machine can be thrust forward. And that's the issue with continuous mining, is that you've got to wait for the, the last segment to go in before you can move the machine forward um, four and a half foot. And then you've got to start the process again of, of building the segments. And, and that's why I liked hexagonal segments, because you could be thrusting off uh, uh, segment A and segment C, but then when you assembled segments, um, B and C, you could then thrust forward off those. So 
Um, the only option around that is gripper shoes, in my opinion. So you'd have a gripper TBM. But we will see. Well, maybe they have um, produced some uh, incredibly innovative uh, second means of, of doing this um, that no one else has ever thought of. Possibly that, that, that could be what's happening. But I've not seen from the boring company um, a really kind of cohesive strategy for achieving continuous mining thus far. So we wait to see what Proofrock 4 and Proofrock 5 have to offer. Um, as you can see, there's always, always lots and lots of people within a TBM because it is a big piece of machinery. It needs constant maintenance and you're building uh, a tunnel lining and to actually put the, 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 the tunnel lining into place, you need this erector here. And then once it's been erected, you then need to bolt um, these segments to each other so you've got one continuous structure. And usually you've got some guy going, or, or, or two people going around uh, with, with an air gun, uh, essentially fixing these segments together. And, um, you, you know, to try and get rid of that person and replace it with a piece of machinery would be quite difficult. Now, if you look at this picture at the bottom of the screen here, we've got these two men looking at these uh, thrust cylinders, there is not a lot of room in this particular machine. This particular machine is boring a tunnel that is over 20 foot in diameter. So imagine you take uh, five and a half foot off the diameter of, or, or six foot, you take six foot off the diameter of this machine, where is um, this extra piece of equipment going to go that's going to fit, you know, install the segments together is it going to be integrated into this erector that is an interesting problem i definitely think it is doable but yet again um i've not seen any any pictures or any kind of um uh, solution written down by the boring company for this particular problem but we know they're working on it and i'm quite intrigued as to how they're doing it but this is definitely a doable problem uh, do sorry a doable um, solution uh, and definitely can be done. And the question is, why has the mining industry not done this already? And the reason is that they don't really care if there are people in the tunnel. By removing people from the tunnel, you obviously make things a lot safer. Um, and, and the only time people should enter the tunnel is when maintenance is required, which might be every like two to three days. So you, it's just that is the way forward. And remember you here have your TBM control room, which will be at the surface and uh, uh, that person can possibly direct four TBMs at the same time. Um, do I think there's going to be robots working inside the tunnel, uh, like Optimus? I don't think so. I think it'll look a bit more like uh, a car manufacturing plant where you've got uh, machines with arms doing things. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they do that. So as you can see, we've got these people here. And then just, just kind of for my reference, you have a, a recessed opening in the concrete segment here, and that allows you to bolt um, a segment onto the left to the segment that is being uh, lifted, and the same on the other side as well. Uh, and that gives you one kind of continuous structure, uh, which is obviously gonna make it a bit stronger. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've learned something. Definitely go and watch Joe's videos. I'll put those in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks again to all my Patreons. As always, you're doing a great job supporting me and I very, very much appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a, have a lovely day and uh, take care. And remember guys, don't be boring. Thank you and good night. Perfect. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Damn, I'm good.